All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, it is 8.30 uh, Pacific Standard Time right now here in a very sunny Seattle. Uh, I feel like I'm going into <laughs> Fraser Crane radio talk show host mode right now. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you can all just give us either a quick raise of the hand or a quick comment uh, that you can hear us and see the screen, and then we'll get started for you. <clears throat> All right, I see one yes. Is anyone else having difficulty hearing us or seeing us? Or your screen rather. Okay. All right. Okay, I've got a couple hands raised and a couple of comments, so we will go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for joining us for the next uh, webinar in the series uh, for the App Maker to App Sheet transition. Uh, it's been a really exciting past few weeks getting a chance to meet a lot of you personally uh, and speak to you over the phone, kind of understand your use case a little better and see how we can help support you uh, in the coming months in the future. Uh, I have with me a few members of the team that we'll do a quick introduction for. Uh, Christian, if you'd like to do a quick introduction. Sure, um, good morning everyone. Uh, I'm Christian Schalk, uh, you probably know me from AppMaker. I've been uh, working on AppMaker for a number of years and so I'm now helping out with the overall transition for AppSheet and just providing guidance. Perfect. And then we also have uh, Hayden with us as well. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Hayden Amaro. So I'm a product consultant on the AppSheet team, and I'm managing, uh, you know, aspects of that transition from the from the AppSheet side. So I'm uh, glad to be here. Perfect. And for those of you that I have not had uh, a privilege to meet yet, my name is Jennifer. Uh, I'm a product marketing manager, uh, also from the AppSheet team as well. And I've been working very closely with Christian uh, to not only meet a lot of you, but to help with the overall transition as well. And Christian, uh, I will put the ball in your court uh, if you'd like to go ahead and start uh, with the presentation. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. I will jump right into it. <clears throat> So the goals of this webinar are to provide a little bit more of like a deep dive on some of the key topics. Uh, it's not covering everything this time, but we're gonna focus on some three core areas, like uh, we'll focus on UI, uh, we'll focus on how to query data, and then we'll touch on um, actions and workflows. So typical questions that we're gonna be addressing will be how to customize UI, um, how do I um, query or filter data in an AppSheet application, uh, and then essentially talking about like actions, workflows, and a special type of workflow known as a webhook, and how those will essentially be able to connect to other services. Um, and then we'll also be talking a little bit about a project that we've been working on uh, over the last week and a half or so, which is essentially to take all of the existing app maker samples and templates and provide a, an equivalent app sheet example of them. So that will provide like a kind of one-to-one -one comparison between the two technologies. It's not gonna be 100% coverage, but it's gonna be a pretty good approximation from all of these samples and samples that you've seen already. We have a, uh, a lot of content to cover today, and we'll do our best to cover your questions as we go, but there will also be a Q&A period uh, at the conclusion of the, the webinar today. Yeah, yeah, good point. <clears throat> so here's our agenda, and let's just jump right into it. So. So first off, uh, AppSheet, if you've worked with it a little bit, you'll notice that it is quite a bit different from AppMaker in the sense that AppMaker uh, essentially provides you like a full design experience, whereas AppSheet has like these kind of core uh, prototype view types in the sense like you have a table or a deck or gallery, and you don't really design them. You essentially uh, get them given to you essentially for free, uh, but you then customize it via the respective properties. Um, and as you recall, um, when we went through this last in the last webinar, you know, AppMaker, if you're familiar with it, it has like widgets. The widgets are hierarchical. You have, can fully design the UI. Uh, whereas AppSheet, you're essentially working with the, the different uh, view uh, types that is given to you, and they're essentially automatically given to you based off of your data. And then you go through and customize. You can then configure the different behaviors inside of them, but you don't actually write any code. You don't actually move widgets in any kind of design uh, environment. So it's quite a bit different, but um, if you also kind of step back and look at what you know that provides you, you don't have to do a lot of 
pixel pushing or anything like that. You you just kind of go with the UI. And I, I do have some demos later on where I'll show you that you can customize, you know, the branding or the formatting, the colors and such. So it's not it's not uh, not in, you can have quite quite a high degree of flexibility on the UI design. And just to add a note on the design element uh, versus really a low code platform like AppMaker and a no code platform like AppSheet, with a no code platform, your data is what drives your design. So how you structure it, which is what Christian alluded to, is going to determine the overall layout and design of your user interface versus the low code AppMaker approach where you have a more granular approach. Uh, that's cool. So some of these uh, points we touched on last time, but basically, yeah, you have like these 11 core view types, uh, whereas obviously with AppMaker, you're, you're familiar with like all the different like 37 or so uh, kind of low level widgets that then you're completely in charge of. Um, I think that second or the third point or whatever kind of touches on, or the second point at least touches a little bit on uh, what uh, Jennifer was saying there. Uh, it is a mobile first kind of an environment, uh, but you can build uh, for desktop, tablets, and, and so forth. Um, and we'll get into a little bit more of that, especially with some of the demos. Um, AppSheet is platform agnostic. So when you build an app, it requires no additional effort to you know, display an Android version or an iOS version. Um, all of those are created automatically along with the desktop version, which is uh, viewable in browser. Yeah, and that's a good point. This is definitely not any kind of native mobile app generation. It's purely a web app, uh, but it's just, you know, ready to view in, in a mobile uh, environment, typically. Um, so let's drill down a little bit more. So the deck and the table view types are essentially, they're pretty similar in the sense that they both present data in a navigable list of records. Um, the table view specifically is, is what you expect. It's, it's like a tabular view, kind of like a compact way. It's analogous, essentially, to the app maker table. Um, and so you have the various options uh, for both like the view, like what the column order, how wide you want the, the, the columns, the sorting, the grouping, the aggregates, um, and also like display, like you know what icon do you want to select to, in order to bring up this view. So you, you have like an icon palette. Uh, you can then also show that or set up the name of that particular view at the bottom of the action bar or wherever you place it. And then also you can put in some conditional logic to to dictate when to actually show that view, so you can provide a logical expression. Uh, also and then some, of the, on, go ahead. Uh, some amount of conditional formatting, and we'll explore that in uh, greater detail later in the presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, and also the app link for particular, you get a URL to this specific view, so that's similar to like um, the app.show page in AppMaker as well. All right. Moving right along, uh, Deck is kind of similar, uh, you get kind of a similar idea, but it's it's not necessarily meant to be like a purely like a, a line by line, but it's like gives you a little bit more um, real estate, I guess, per record. Uh, and then you can just go through and select the different options for the for this particular viewpoint. You can set up like a, a primary or a secondary header. Uh, you can set up like a nested table column and so forth. So you get a little bit more granularity. You could kind of think of this as like the app maker list panel widget. So if you recall, the list panel widget gives you a little bit more kind of a generic, just a repeating row, and it's up to you to build the content for each row. Uh, just the difference that you, you go through and you select the different properties, such as you know the headers and such, and then you design it that way. All right. But otherwise, pretty similar to the, the, the table. Um, you do have the row selection behavior. You also have the ability to swipe left or right and then act on those particular actions. All right. Um, the detail view, as you expect, would be drilling down further into a single record. Um, typically, this is going to be uh, presented like you know in a, in a vertical fashion. Uh, it's kind of like um, like an AppMaker form. So if you generate a form in AppMaker, especially if you have like a read-only form, um, it's basically the same thing in this regard. Except for um, you know with AppMaker, you, you you're kind of you know left with the responsibility of finishing the UI or customizing it in the designer. Whereas here, you just work with the property editors. Um, I won't go through all the options, but as you can see, you have a high degree of flexibility on how to define or change the UI and its behaviors and such. All right. uh, and then just touching on some of the other kind of important view types, uh, form, as you, as you know, is just like typically when you want to enter information into your backend data, it will give you a default generation. The fields are already defi defined by what uh, columns you've selected for your table, the underlying database table or sheet table. Um, Form also has some cool features where you can actually capture like signatures or upload photos, thumbnails, so other things that you would have to do a lot more work 
uh, on your own in AppMaker, whereas here it's provided to you for free, uh, just as per the feature of the form uh, widget or the form view type as well. Uh, gallery, as you can expect, is kind of like typically showing image, thumbnail, content in a kind of a gallery uh, fashion. Uh, and then you can you know, allow your users to page through the different images and such and take actions upon those. Uh, map, self-explanatory. So not only does it cover addresses, but if you have X, Y coordinates or lat long columns, like in a spreadsheet, that will then allow it to be uh, viewed in a Google map. Uh, that's part of the UI as well. Uh, charts, so there's various chart uh, types, uh, typically like histogram or bar charts, pie charts, donut, column, you know, and, and scatter plot. Uh, it also has some built-in features where you can do like count or sum, average, min, max, uh, to then you know just do some final uh, operations on your data. Um, and you can also customize the colors, uh, trend lines you can place in there, and um, otherwise, yeah, pretty pretty flexible stuff. Um, the idea being that you can provide very quick charts without having to kind of get really deep into the technology. That's correct. And then, um, oh, please continue. Oh, good. Okay. I was going to dive right into the next thing, which is a, a very key feature. If you definitely want to create like a more like a rich kind of a desktop friendly uh, environment. So dashboard is a very important view type in the sense that dashboard essentially allows you to uh, create a view built off of children views. So that you can put in calendars, maps, charts, et cetera, into a kind of a collection of a dashboard. Um, and so, yeah, that, Feel free if you want to discuss any further, but I think uh, Hayden will, will start to walk us through a couple of different demos here. Yeah, so now we'll hop into a quick demo if you transfer uh, presentership to me. And we'll just do a, a real quick um, overview of the different types of views that are available to you in AppSheet. So what we're looking at now is the, the AppSheet editor. And on the right-hand side, we have the emulator, which is showing you uh, live what your app might look like on a mobile device. And so I'll walk you through what some of these views look like really quickly. So what we're looking at now is uh, the view type called onboarding. And so it can uh, walk you stepwise uh, through information that's relevant to your app. In this case, uh, it's just pointed at an employee directory and some information about some, uh, some employees in this app. And so we're able to walk stepwise through that data. And then uh, once it's done, it drops you into the main app view. Uh, here, uh, we're looking at the assistant view where we're able to search um, for, for different users. And then we have uh, in our menu here, um, the same data presented in different view types. So um, I'm able to show you what it looks like in the, the card view. If you click into that, you're able to see the detail view that we discussed. Here um, is our deck view, which uh, has the added feature of some actions that you can take. Um, in addition to displaying the, the primary data. Um, here we have a, a gallery view, uh, which is a little bit more image focused than the others. It's really made, meant for uh, displaying uh, you know, images. This is the map view, which we discussed. So it's captured information about the, the addresses that are associated with the various rows in our data. And we're able to click in uh, to see more information about those various map points. Um, here we have the, the table view, our basic table view that we discussed. So um, if you had additional columns, you'd be able to scroll left and right. And then hopping in to look at some of the charting functionality, this is an app which shows some basic charts. So here we have a pie chart, which is charting uh, flavors of pie. And we're able to click in or hover over that data to get a little bit of information about count. Um, an example of our column chart functionality and our, our scatter plot functionality as well. And so um, uh, that's a, a kind of a quick high level uh, overview of the different view types that are available in AppSheet. And you can see um, the full list here and explore them uh, yourselves. And what I would like to also add, and I believe we hinted at this in our first webinar in the series, but that area that Hayden was displaying on the far right-hand side of the screen, that's what we call in our documentation the emulator view for your application. And you can actually, in real time, see changes that you've made. Uh, there's an option to sync if you make modifications to your data, but you can view, and uh, this is the mobile view, you can expand the bar over actually into tablet or desktop view as well. 
So you have more of a real-time experience in terms of how you're developing your application or create, building your application than you may have had in AppMaker before. Thanks, Jeff. That's a good point, because like with AppMaker, you have to click preview and it sends the, the application literally over the wire to the server, whereas here you have it uh, available at all times. <laughs> You'll also notice there's a little uh, curly uh, line that sometimes if you want to synchronize the data back to the backend data source, um, you'll see like a little red uh, dot, I think, sometimes if, the, if it tells you that it needs to synchronize again, but yeah. Right. Can you just have it made through the data, then uh, it'll have a little red icon here letting you know that uh, you know it might make sense to sync. Time to sync. Yeah. Yep. So if we're going to transfer back to the deck. Perfect. Let's see. Okay, perfect. Let's get Christian back on. Perfect. Thank you, Hayden, for that display. All right. I can pull up my deck here. All right. So hopefully you can see it. Good. <clears throat> So just another uh, quick thing I was going to show um, as I was going through and, and working with with AppSheet, probably the biggest thing to me was that with AppMaker you have kind of a built-in uh, uh, material uh, design uh, out of the box, and you also have uh, variants. So design variants where you have like a little drop-down list, and you can like customize the look and feel of every uh, individual widget inside of AppMaker. The AppSheet approach is a little bit different. It's a lot easier actually. You just have like um, like a brand tab, and I'll show you in a second. But basically, that brand tab allows you to do some further customizations, like you can select a theme. Uh, right now, it's just two, like dark and light. I, I assume these will start to grow uh, as the product continues to mature. You can set up like primary colors. You can set up a, a logo for your app, which is, this is actually one of the things we are hoping to have in AppMaker eventually is like, you know, because like right now on AppMaker, you have those little AppMaker icons that, that we're going to customize that a lot more. Uh, and then further stuff. Also, if you want to have uh, formatting rules for the actual data in your, for example, a table, if you want, say, a number to appear in a certain color, you can set also conditional uh, text formatting. So if like a, a certain number, like a financial number is below or negative, you might want to show that in red. Uh, you might want to even show an icon next to that uh, data so that it denotes that it's like a, a currency, for example. Um, so really quickly, I'll switch over to, um, what I'm talk talking about, and I'll click on brand. So in this particular app, I have like some uh, projects, and I'm tracking like a budgets. And so in this case, if I you know just do a few, let me close up my little control panel so I can see what I'm doing. So I can just toggle some things really quickly, change the the theme, change like the primary color, uh, even change like the, the whatever the uh, the logo. Um, if I want to even show that in the header and so forth. Uh, so it's pretty flexible in this regard. Um, Christian, can, other, you actually, yes. can you actually click back on the app logo piece, expand yes. that again? Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important to note here at the very bottom in the left-hand corner of this, there's a custom option, and that's where you can upload your own companies or organizations um, logo or icon. There are specs that are provided. We can give you a list in the support documentation for this. Um, I'm happy to add that to the thread with uh, questions that we'll be posting the video on if you're interested. But this is how you really get into ownership of this application as your own. So just, just something important to mention here. You can do the same thing with the launch image uh, option, which Christian will touch on in a moment, and the background image as well. All of those can be made custom. And a fun pro tip, uh, for the launch and sync image, you can also use uh, dynamic GIFs if you are yes. still uh, yes. which is kind of fun. <laughs> Yeah, so if you have an internal app uh, that you want to liven up a little bit or make a little more personable, it's always fun to do something a little quirky as your launch image. Uh, we found that helps <laughs> with a lot of the internal process-based uh, applications. Awesome, very cool. So the only other thing I was gonna show here was that you can set up formatting rules. And so I set up like a, a real simple rule here on this budget column for my, uh, for my, for my data. And then I just pick like this little uh, USD uh, currency, and I went ahead and changed like the text to be something uh, noticeable here. So I, I chose green. So, and then, oh, the formatting, um, yeah, other stuff you can set up. I increased the font size, and um, I think that's mainly it. So I'll go ahead and switch back to the deck. Cool. <clears throat> All right. So just a few a few final notes. Um, you know, you, you know, just to stress, like it, although AppSheet is mobile first, it, it is also desktop friendly. So uh, you know, I showed like there's you know dashboard widget that you can uh, 
throw other uh, children's views into. Um, it's material design like, I would say. It's not exact match, but it, it still kind of falls in into the kind of the same look and feel for the most part. Um, you don't have to worry about CSS or you don't have the ability to work with like third party UI libraries and themes. Uh, but you have a, a pretty good degree of flexibility in there as we just walk through with like the formatting and the brand features. Um, so I think that's basically it. I think we can move on. Let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about um, our next um, our next uh, bit of data here, uh, our next <laughs> next topic, uh, which is uh, querying data. And so as with AppMaker, you know, you have the notion of you know, creating data sources. Those data sources allow you to define a query that goes against your backend data, and then you associate that data source with your front end UI. Very similar concept here. So here it's not that different. Whereas, like, you can uh, obviously you have your backend data, which we talked about in our last webinar. You can set up a table or a SQL table in the background, uh, and then you can apply custom filters. And these filters are called slices. And the slices themselves have like some key things. They're going to have like a, a source table, and then you're going to have a row filter condition. So that's kind of like what, what we have here. We have our source table. We're going to set up a uh, row filter condition. This is like a logical expression that you can use the built-in expression builder to help you out. Uh, the expression builder also provides like a lot of common examples. Um, that's, a, that's in general one thing that I found very nice with AppSheet in the sense that it always provides helpful tips and guidance like, oh, would you like to add like a, a slice that shows like a, a recent set of projects that have a due date, you know, less than 24 hours, things like that. Um, so it will actually do a lot of the work for you. You can just accept it and then and turn it on for you. And this um, so yeah. Such that it plays only uh, entries which have a due date, uh, which is past the, the current time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for this particular one, yeah. This is just one of the examples that had popped up. It got auto-generated for me, so I figured I wanted to give you something. Um, so in addition to filtering the, the actual rows, you can also select specific columns as well, and then also the actions associated as well. So you can define maybe specific actions you want to be for that filter. Um, and then, of course, the, the, the mode itself, like does it allow updates or ads, edits, or is it just like read-only? Okay. So some similarities and differences. Uh, conceptually, they're essentially very similar to AppMaker's data source uh, capability. Um, they, they both allow you to build queries or expressions to filter the data. You have your expression uh, assistant or expression builder in AppSheet. AppMaker has its query builder um, um, that's associated with the data source to, as well. Uh, you can do SQL queries. Um, and a lot of times, you typically would use multiple site slices in in an app sheet app, obviously, because you want to have different, you know, sub, uh, sub uh, sets of data. The exact same is true, obviously, with AppMaker as you're going through. Typically, you'll build a number of different uh, data sources in the background. Um, some differences is that, um, and I was discussing this with Hayden actually yesterday. Like with AppMaker, you may be familiar with how you can take custom parameters that might be passed on to your application via, say, an HTTP parameter. Um, there are ways to do that, but we can probably talk about it maybe a little bit in Q&A, but I, there isn't like a direct match from what I've seen uh, uh, directly. Um, AppMaker provides uh, uh, scripted filters where you can just write specific code and generate out kind of like your own uh, customized uh, filtered data. Um, and also another key difference is like filters, um, as opposed to slices, Typically, a filter you can just apply to any particular subset or a portion of a page. So, for example, you might want to have a data source, uh, like a relation data source, have that relation data source apply to only like the related records from like a master or a parent table, things like that. Whereas with AppSheet, it's a little bit different. You can assign a slice on a view by view basis. Hopefully, feel free to jump in if, if need be, Hayden, on any of that as well. I think you covered that well. Okay, cool. So uh, I'm just going to give a, a real quick demo of, of slices, and then uh, feel free to jump in as well if you want to add more color as well. So in this case, this is uh, an app. I didn't really show it too well earlier, but this is a little simple uh, example app that I've been uh, working with. It's like, it's like a project tracking uh, app that I started off with this spreadsheet. I then generated like a, a basic UI. Um, so then I have my data. I just have this one data object here, and it has the various columns. You know, project name, priority, budget, etc. So I wanted to make it such that I can click on a button here 
that toggles like between all the projects and then only my projects. So how do you do that? Well, you can build a slice. Uh, so this is the slice right here. So I just collapse it or pop it open again. These are some other ones that got generated as it, you know, as you can see here, I can even generate more automatically. Uh, that's how these were created. But this one particular slice was created. So I just called it my projects. That corresponds with that one down there. Uh, I set it to the source table. And then I apply a row filter condition. And so in this case, I'm just saying, as long as the owner, the owner column matches the user email. So like if anyone else is using this application, they would see only their projects. And then I can decide what columns I want to actually have. If I want all the columns to show up or if I just want a subset of these. So then I can toggle that. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then the actions itself, I'm going to go ahead and accept the default. Uh, or I could like customize and delete some of these. And as I mentioned before, the mode, uh, you know, if I want to allow updates or, you know, turn that off like, or make it entirely read-only, I can do that. Um, so that's pretty much it from a, a basic of uh, Slice and how this works in this uh, particular example. Um, Hayden, if you have any other uh, details to share, I can definitely oh, no, jump in. That uh, covers the basics. And then if uh, anyone has any, you know, more in-depth questions, we can address those uh, in the Q&A session. Mm -hmm. And also just to show you, like this is the expression assistant here. It shows like different examples and then you can like, you know, just try it out uh, just by clicking insert and then you can customize it further just by typing in here and test it as well. Uh, so in this sense, it's, it's actually uh, quite friendly to play around with the data and get it to work. One thing I did notice also just, you'll notice like one difference that uh, with AppMaker and AppSheet is that AppMaker has this notion of auto saving. You know, every like few seconds is constantly syncing back to the uh, the application that it's saving. Uh, whereas here, if you do some changes, you'll see this little button will appear. And typically, you want to click on the button just to kind of re-sync everything, such that the application logic, everything is all synchronized, and also like the the data itself is fresh as well. So that's one difference that just to kind of keep in mind as you're working on your different apps. What's uh, right. neat about that feature is that um, as you save, you're generating new versions. And um, in the management section, you're able to revert your app to uh, prior versions, or you're able to set a stable versions, which is pushed to users, right. while you experiment with you know, uh, your application. And then you can you know, switch the user experience to that, to that latest version uh, as you see fit. Yeah, and actually, this is a very good point that you mentioned it because with AppMaker, as you recall, there's kind of a similar way where it's like you're continuously saving, and then you can pop it open the settings, and you can see all the different iterations, and you can apply tags to those those particular versions, and then deploy from that. Uh, but so it's pretty. That's also conceptually pretty pretty similar. So, but, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. Now let's talk about um, actions and workflows. Uh, this is also like you know one of the key. Uh, uh, functionality in an app sheet. Um, obviously, you know, if you want to do typical use cases, like if a user clicks on something or whatever, you want to trigger some other behavior, and there's different types of behaviors, which we'll get into in a second. Yeah. So, uh, uh, workflows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actions fall into generally three different categories. So there are yep. UI navigations that takes you to different views within your apps, uh, different apps themselves, or to, uh, you know, external URL links. You also have data changes. So these are actions that allow you to add, delete, uh, and modify your data. And then the third category is external communications. So um, these actions allow you to do things like send push notifications, uh, send text messages, or um, send emails. So those are the, the general categories. Mm -hmm. and, and then also you can set up you know, grouped actions as well. So if you want to create a sequence of, of actions. And then workflows are essentially actions, but they're triggered by data changes. So for example, if a new row is added or existing row is updated, you can trigger off of those and then have like a workflow uh, commence. All right, anything else you want to touch on that for, for now? Yeah, one example of one of our favorite workflows we've worked with is what's called the snapshot feature, which you can essentially take a still or a static shot of the dashboard view, for example. Uh, at the end of every day and you can auto send that to like your executive team so they can see a summary of all the activity that you've collected in the field uh, that day for example there's a lot of power in the workflows workflows uh, for those that are more developer um, developer friendly more 
technical, I would say, uh, you'll find that to be a more similar aspect to what you experienced with App Maker. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but I believe you'll have a, a more, a more yeah, similar this is experience. Where you start to uh, tease out in your development time some of the you know richer functionalities of AppSheet is in the exactly. workflow section. And then what you had described earlier is a uh, report, uh, which is related to workflows, but it's triggered on a, uh, a time basis, typically. There you go. So it'll trigger at, uh, say, noon every Friday, uh, whereas workflows are triggered by changes in your data. So if you've added a new row, edited some data, uh, or deleted some data. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. And also, just to, just to provide kind of like the AppMaker comparisons, um, so what uh, what Hayden was just saying about reports, where it's like time based, um, you may have, may or may not have done this with AppMaker, but you can actually work with the trigger uh, mechanism that's provided by AppScript directly, where you can actually set up time based triggers that will then say fire an event and say execute a function or whatever. Um, so that also falls in line uh, uh, pretty pretty well in this regard. Um, just to kind of circle back on actions, the the app and the data <clears throat> are pretty good comparisons to the so the two action types app and data they they pretty much correlate with app makers like front end type of ui uh, events so for example if you click on a button or if you click on some link to take you somewhere they actually do uh correlate pretty well and then the data part uh the data action also corresponds quite well with the app maker events so if you have like an app maker model and you want to trigger off of a particular uh, data uh, event, such as like when a new record is added, that really falls in line with this particular type of data. Um, okay, let's move on. So in this case, I think we're going to switch it over to Hayden to, to show a little bit more on how they actually work. So I'll let you uh, take over the screen or I can Great. pass it to you, I think. Okay, so um... Now we're gonna look at an application which kind of demonstrates the basics of uh, how workflows and actions uh, function. So um, we're looking at an app uh, called Procurit. It's a procurement and expensing application. And so what it allows users to do is to order um, you know, certain items uh, from their management chain. And they input information about that item and a quantity, uh, a total is calculated. You can put in a description or a business use case. Let's we'll put in some, some gibberish there, categorize it. Um, and then it automatically pulls in information about the user. Um, so it knows that I'm, you know, in this example, in the sales department, and this is my cost center. And it also has pulled in my, uh, my designated approver in the management and uh, approval chain. Um, so let's say I'm getting this from amazon.com. Uh, we'll just drop some information in there. So um, now that I've saved that, what it's done is triggered a workflow. So what it's detected is the addition of a new row of data corresponding to that procurement order. And what it does uh, using these four workflows here is that um, first of all, it detects that an addition has been made and it sets the status of that order to pending. Um, additionally, um, it sends a an email uh, notification to the next person in your management chain using a workflow. So they'll receive an email um, stating, hey, uh, this order has been received, it needs your review, at which point it will appear in the review required section. So if I change my, uh, my preview as, if I get this right, uh, I may have uh, entered the wrong email, but let's have a look. Yeah, so you'll see that um, the order that I've just placed has now shown up in the review required section of the approver. And now I can review the details of that, um, that order, and I can use an action now that I've created. Um, so these two buttons correspond to actions that I've generated. And what they do is that they uh, take some data in that row corresponding to this order and they'll set the status to approved. And once that change uh, has been made, a second workflow will detect the change in status and send an email uh, to the original user, uh, notifying them that their order has been approved. And it also, uh, a cool little functionality, um, so it'll it'll notify you whether your expense is approved or rejected, 
And um, if it's a procurement order, it'll also generate a dynamic PO and send it to a, a vendor if you've configured it to do so. So um, it'll dynamically pull in information based on an email template, which in this case is a, a Google Doc. Um, and it'll show you an itemized list of everything that's associated with that purchase order, uh, including the total, and send it to the, the vendor of your choice. So that's a quick kind of uh, high-level example of how you can use uh, workflows and actions to manage processes. Amazing. Thank you for that, Hayden. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Go back to the uh, presentation. There we go. All right. And we'll jump into the next topic, which is related, is webhooks, which basically allows you to communicate with external services or APIs that use these standard HTTP protocols, um, does post, put, uh, delete, patch, et cetera. It does not support GET uh, as per like the webhooks, uh, essentially standard. Um, you essentially would set up typically like a HTTP post to a uh, third party service, and then it would uh, trigger an additional service to go back to your data. Um, and then you can set the uh, the workflow rules in order to trigger these actual webhooks. Um, there's further options. I won't go into all those, but the typical of the HDB uh, standard uh, content types, headers, and body, and so forth. All right. And uh, we'll switch it back to uh, Hayden for another demo, if you're ready. Yep. Uh, I'm all set. Perfect. So while um, this is transitioning, I've got a question from Scott. And his question is on uh, it is rather how can server side triggers be integrated? Uh, and his question was more or less around app script. Uh, Christian, do you want to tackle this one? Okay, so if you're talking about like app script triggers specifically, um, so if you know like how app script triggers work, you can set them to be time based. Um, typically, that's what you would do in, in I think in what you're regarded. Um, so you could have a time-based trigger execute an app script function, that could be something that you might want to, it really depends, I think, um, I'm thinking of, there's different ways to do it. Like in general, you have the ability to have app script trigger, uh, you know, execution of, of whatever code you want using this time-based triggers. Um, in the, the, I mean, there's different types of triggers as well with app script, you can have the triggers that would key off of like, uh, user events such as like clicking on a record in a spreadsheet, et cetera. But anyway, if the question is like, how would you use time-based triggers on AppScript to do something to do with AppSheet? Uh, in that regard, you would probably, your best course of action would be to have a time-based trigger do something with the underlying spreadsheet. And then the AppSheet application that would uh, provide the UI would then reflect that change in the data, uh, if that's what you're getting at. Um, um, yeah, without further detail, we might need to dig into that more. But that would be my first reaction to how you might want to set that up. Because the the one thing to keep in mind is that with AppScript, you have full capability to update, delete, do any kind of like data management for sheets or docs or whatever. Um, now, in this case, because AppSheet is so closely uh, tied to a, typically a backend uh, spreadsheet, you can then use that as kind of the c communication vehicle or the bridging vehicle between the two technologies. Great. Oh, thank uh, thanks, you. Christian. Mm -hmm. um, so now uh, we're looking at an application which kind of demonstrates how <laughs> web work at the most basic level. So webhooks uh, live under the, the workflow tab here. Um, uh, Christian had explained the basics of how you configure these. Uh, what you do is you point it at a certain URL endpoint. You include authentication information for that endpoint so it uh, accepts your request. And then you're able to go out and poke that uh, you know, REST API with a webhook. So in this case, we've pointed our, our webhook, which is triggered when uh, new entries are added to our data source, when we add a new row, in this case, a, a new webhook here via a form. And what that does is that it, it points a JSON body webhook at this URL. And uh, this URL is a webhook test site. So it'll display uh, the, the body of whatever's received. And so uh, we can just demonstrate that we're able to go out and poke these external services. In this case, I've left the body blank, and so it'll generate a default body for this webhook request. So let's go in and we'll click. Um, right now we're looking at a record of sent webhooks. We'll create a new one. We'll call
call it. Uh, this is a web hook for our webinar. Great, great. And so uh, it's pulled in the date and we save it. And then upon syncing, just one moment. So we've got a record of it here, we'll click on it. And I've set up an action that allows us to navigate to an external site to view the results of that webhook. So we'll click here. And now what we're seeing is a, a record of all the webhooks that I've sent uh, to this, this test URL. And then our latest one uh, shows up here. You'll notice that it includes the body that we uh, filled out there. This is a webhook for our webinar. Um, so that's uh, the basics of how this functions. Um, you can use this with services like Zapier to get some kind of interesting functionalities out of your app. Uh, my colleague Derek has created uh, a webhook which allows you to ascertain the, the current position of the International Space Station using a webhook that pokes <laughs> some ISS data, uh, takes into account your location and tells you when you'll be able to see it next. So. Um, Really, like uh, webhooks and our ability to communicate with external services opens up a whole new world of uh, possibilities in app building. Um, yeah, so uh, that, that's the that's the basics here. We can go back to the and, presentation. And also, just to chime in, like this is definitely a very important uh, area uh, for a lot of our app maker customers who are constantly like uh, connecting to third-party APIs. And so. Uh, this is this is definitely an area that I'll be uh, I'll spending some more time, and I hope to provide more examples as well. Especially when it gets into uh, interacting with Google APIs. So, for example, uh, the various uh, ML AI um, services that you get with the Google Cloud Platform—they're quite uh, powerful stuff. So, it, it's uh, I'm I'm definitely going to spend some time and start to show how you can do that also from an app sheet standpoint. So I've done some stuff already with AppMaker and AppScript in general, but I definitely want to start to share some of that stuff over with AppSheet as well. Um, so that takes us to like this last part where we want to essentially touch on some ongoing uh, work that we've been doing. Uh, Hayden and Jennifer and I uh, have started to essentially identify all of the existing samples and templates. Uh, so just to kind of give you an idea, I'll click on this link here. And you can see that we have like all these samples, we have all the templates, and these are already, you know, preloaded into AppMaker. But well, specifically, these templates are preloaded. The samples you actually have to go to the the documentation site. Uh, so if you like, um, we can switch back over to to Hayden, and he can show some of the examples. Uh, we also have a spreadsheet that we've been tracking all of these. So we've pretty much gone through every single one of these and started to comment how we would approach the same. Uh, use cases. So, like, how would you, you know, you know, do like a simple data hello world, or how would you do like a, a simple registration form and stuff like that? Yeah, so. that's great. So we've gone through uh, that list of sample applications that kind of show you core concepts in building an app maker, and we've replicated them in AppSheet. And so um, every app that I've showed to you today is publicly available under my AppSheet portfolio, and we'll distribute the link to that. Uh, by email and in our, our follow-up documentation to that webinar. So um, if you're interested in you know, replicating some of that app maker functionality, you can select an app from, uh, from that list and uh, see its, its replication here in AppSheet. So um, if we wanna look through some of these that are available now, um, we have apps demonstrating uh, how to set up a, a basic forum, um, examples of how to configure workflows, uh, Translated. You want to show the forum one? Yeah. Or the well, registration one. Those are pretty, pretty, uh, pretty you know, Yeah, popular. sure. Uh, hop into a couple of them. Yeah. Um, let's see. We'll look at the, the registration app, for example. And so this shows you the basics of how to set up a, a registration type form to uh, input information into a user table. So you're able to capture your name, email, phone number, assign a role uh, in a physical location, and that'll save it to your to your user table for you to run um, you know, security filters against or uh, slices against. Um, some of the others that we might be interested in, in looking at, you know, from the very basics, you know, like a, a hello world type app, which uh, captures an entry and then displays that information to you if you're uh, totally um, you know, new to the platform. So it kind of spans the whole uh, range of possible, uh, you know, developer experiences with AppSheet, and should take you a long way towards, uh, you know, being able to create apps yourself. Um, 
Right, and in addition to uh, these app maker template apps that Hayden uh, has been working diligently to replicate with Christian. Uh, we also do have an entire suite on the AppSheet site of additional sample applications, whether they be specific use case or industry related um, for your business, all the way down to you know personal items. I know one of the first that I built that I think is publicly available is a recipe management app um, because nobody likes meal planning. So things like that are available for you to copy and use in your own uh, own day-to-day -day life as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, we have hundreds of apps to teach you um, how to use the platform, uh, including features that may not be so easily available <laughs> in AppMaker, like our uh, machine learning and predictive modeling. Um, you're all welcome to hop in. I, one of my favorite apps that I've built is a uh, uses predictive modeling and uh, 300 years of historical soccer match data right. to, to predict the outcome of matches. So, um, you know, when the when the season starts back up, you can hop in and, and use that. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you, Hayden. Yeah, sure. What, one thing that that I found also quite nice was that you know having built a lot of those samples and templates back in the day with AppMaker, <clears throat> it was also kind of refreshing to see kind of a new take on some of these use cases, and and a lot of them were quite uh, trivial to implement on the uh, on the uh, the app sheet side. Uh, there is one area though that I think that we would want to um, just touch on a little bit is that. Uh, for now, at least the, the directory support is, is something that uh, is not the same, so you don't necessarily have the direct access to the, uh, the admin SDK or essentially the uh, directory API, uh, but that's something that's under discussion at the moment because um, some of the AppMaker applications do uh, definitely re uh, rely on that particular area, so something that we're talking about. So. <clears throat> um, cool, so I think we're ready to move on. Um, yeah, we can go into more like a Q&A uh, format if we have some uh, other questions that you want to discuss. And then, of course, we have our uh, additional information content here that we definitely want to leave you with. Great. Uh, so, uh, Christian, I'll touch on this for just a quick moment before we address a few questions. Um, so these resources that are available on this slide uh, are really critical in terms of helping onboard you quickly to the AppSheet platform. Uh, we've been working really diligently uh, to provide transition resources specifically related to app from the AppMaker to AppSheet transition, such as this webinar our previous webinar and other documentation. Uh, I displayed the link at the bottom. Uh, I believe Christian's also going to uh, make this slide deck publicly available, so you'll be able to access it through there. That particular link is going to be updated nearly daily with new information and content when it becomes available in relation to this transition. We want to make sure that everybody has the most relevant, accurate information when it becomes available for this because we understand how critical time is. Uh, the AppSheet Udemy course is a 100-level academy for onboarding uh, to better understand AppSheet terminology. It does not necessarily touch on how it may be different from AppMaker, uh, but it gives you a great overview of how the platform works. Uh, we do also have the AppSheet Creator Community, which was linked uh, in your welcome message at the start of this. It's a great place to ask use case specific questions or broader general questions in terms of how you might implement a particular feature or function with your AppSheet application. Uh, it's crowdsourced and we have a lot of experts on the community uh, that are really well versed in real world application of your AppSheet um, for your AppSheet development experience. We also have a, a documentation center that for some of the articles such as webhook related, workflow related, uh, we'll get into more of the technical components to help you execute as well. And Christian, if you just wanna leave this slide up, we'll get into some of the Q&A. Okay. All right, so uh, this question comes from our community. Uh, this is from Keith and he's saying, I have an action button that I'd like to overlay on the table view, but it only seems to appear in the detail view. Are only certain actions available in certain view types? Um, sure, yeah, I can touch on that. So uh, when you're in the, the interface for setting up your actions, if you click into an action, you're able to see that uh, you, have, you have four options for how to display uh, that action. So you can display an overlay, you can choose display prominently, uh, display inline and do not display um, and uh, so that'll that those are kind of like the four ways you can poke 
uh, how an action appears. Um, I believe you should be able to make an, an action available in a in a table view as well. Um, so we can maybe demonstrate that. So here we, we have it in a, uh, a deck view. And then if we switch it to UX, we'll just give it a quick test. Uh, we're in the view called sent webhooks. And we'll change that to table view. And yet, um, so it appears that uh, unless you do it as an overlay, we click overlay. So now if I'm in the table view and I've selected display overlay, I'm able to make that action available within a table view. In fact, it'll be uh, available in every view. Um, but beyond that, it will not be possible to, to display it uh, to a table unless, uh, for example, I think we may be able to attach it to the date column here. So if we save that, yeah. So if we save that, we can select a, uh, uh, a column to it uh, to attach that action to, and you'll see that I've made this action available in a table view. So you can do that by clicking uh, display overlay, which makes it available in all views, or you can click display inline here and attach it to a particular column. So uh, I hope that helps. Perfect. Thank you so much for that, Hayden. Yeah, sure. uh, and Keith, if Hayden wasn't didn't quite answer your question, please feel free to follow up on the community thread, and we'll make sure uh, we get you a, a better answer, a better fit uh, for your question. Um, so we have just a few moments left, and I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Uh, so really quickly, actually, Hayden, would you be so kind as to pull up uh, the employee directory application that you had created. Yeah, sure. So um, it's worth noting that it doesn't connect via API to an external directory service. It's really just a, a, a sample app that we have to track uh, employee information. So we've got a couple that accomplish that. So we can have a, a quick look at ones of varying uh, complexity. Let's go back to my, uh, my app thing here. So we've got one employee directory app, and I think we have another that's our generalized uh, sample app as well. Cool. So um, what this does is it utilizes a, a one-to-many relationship, and it allows you to look up uh, employees uh, based on you know a, a variety of pieces of data that are associated with them through the search function, or by navigating to a, an individual department and scrolling through. So here I've clicked on a sales department, and you'll notice that there are a number of entries, 249 associated uh, with this department. Um, and we can click into this to see you know, a, a table view, or we're able to search this information. So let's say uh, Bernadine. And we're able to click into that and get um, additional information about that user. And then we have some automatically generated actions associated with this information. So we're able to send her an email that'll navigate to my, my email client. Um, or if a, uh, a um, phone number is associated, you'd be able to click that and make a call. Um, and so the, obviously this is highly customizable and you can change it to, uh, to fit uh, your use case and your needs. This is a fairly simple example, kind of meant to spur uh, you know, your development. Um, typically, these sample apps are created uh, with simplicity in mind, uh, such that people can easily understand them. Uh, we like to avoid, you know, landing a, a spaceship in people's yard and asking them to, <laughs> to reverse engineer it. Yeah, that, that could be a fun challenge, though, sometimes. Right. Uh, Christian, I am going to pass this back to you and then ask you just to display that contact um, or resource page one last time and answer just a final question here and kind of a broader announcement to the group, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, so for those of you that uh, have either written in um, to the am-appsheet at googlegroups.com and are awaiting your code, uh, or for those that have not done that yet for the discount code that's available for current AppMaker customers wanting to transfer to AppSheet. Uh, I just wanted to say a quick note that uh, we are working diligently to ensure that we're able to get you codes as quickly as possible. If this is the first you're hearing of it, uh, I would recommend either submitting an email to that am-appsheet at googlegroups.com, letting us know 
um, that you would like to at, receive your discount code, there will be a, a few additional follow-up questions we'll have for you in terms of how we validate your account and the number of user licenses, things of that nature. Uh, another good place to go is going to be the transition resource page I mentioned earlier. I uh, will have more up-to-date information there in terms of uh, your plan uh, that you have access to and how you contact our team as well. Uh, I want to take a moment to say thank you to all of you for attending the session today. Uh, I know that there is a lot of information swirling around and hopefully this helps clarify a few points for you. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, to that am-appsheet at googlegroups.com. Uh, I am actively involved in the conversations there. Uh, we do also have the AppSheet community forum uh, that feel free to either tag myself or send me a message through that forum and I'm happy to help where I can. Uh, and aside from that, quick thank you to Hayden uh, for not only presenting today, but for helping build an uh, application portfolio and app sheet that replicates app maker apps. Hopefully that's helpful to all of you. And thank you to Christian as well for, for joining today and uh, helping guide the transition process as well. Sure, no, definitely very happy to be here. Excellent. And as usual, just let us know if you have questions and enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank you yeah, so much. I would, I, also, I would just say, like, if there's any key things you'd like to see in, in a future webinar, feel free to just post it and then we can continue to, uh, to provide the exact content that you want. So, so yeah. Absolutely. That's a great point. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. And this video will be uh, posted in the community forum and in our YouTube channel in the next 24 hours. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.